Although each BIOS and motherboard manufacturer do things slightly differently, most motherboards and BIOS have some things in common. I'm going to show you some of those commonalities. The first one is a lot of original equipment manufacturers, OEMs or motherboard manufacturers, like to put up a little splash screen. Instead of displaying all the cryptic power on self-test information, they'll put up a splash screen such as this. In this one I can press the tab key to show the post screen or I can press the delete key to enter the setup. So generally on the splash screen they'll have information about how to get to the setup or how to get past the splash screen. As the power on self-test screen is showing us we can see information about our BIOS, our version number, when the BIOS was released, and then as it's going through the power on self-test and detecting our devices, if we want to stop and be able to see this screen we can use the pause break button on our keyboard to be able to pause this screen so we can see in this case what type of hard drive we have, our primary master drive, and then our secondary master is a CD-ROM drive. And then you can generally press any key to continue booting. In this case I'm going to press Control alt delete This time on the BIOS boot screen I want to press the delete key to enter the setup. So I'll press that repeatedly and eventually that should boot into our CMOS setup. The layout of the CMOS setup screen is slightly different for every different version and from every different manufacturer. But generally on the main screen we'll have a, some sort of legend down here it tells us to press the escape key to exit, the up and down arrow keys to select, we can change the color, F10 to save and exit. And then we have a series of options on our screen to be able to go through the BIOS settings and set different settings. On the main BIOS screen we have information about our BIOS version, in this case it's version 1.00.38-W. So if we were to do a BIOS update we could look at the version we have and the current version that's out there and see if we need to upgrade. Select the standard CMOS setup and press enter. This will give us the setup for our standard CMOS information. On the standard screen you'll generally have the date and time. In this case it shows we have 382 megabytes of memory in this machine. And then this one happens to show that we have a floppy device and then it has information on all our hard drives and optical drives. To get back out of this screen I press the escape key that takes us back to the main menu. Use the arrow key to select advance and then press enter. On this screen it shows information about our CPU. In this case we have a 700 megahertz. Our CPU ratio is locked. This machine does not support any overclocking. Then on this screen we have our boot device priority. So in this case we're going to first boot to the CD-ROM. Then our second boot device is the floppy. Third boot device is our IDE hard drive. To exit this screen I press escape. And switch down to the peripheral setup. This allows me to enable or disable onboard items such as onboard audio, floppy drive controller, our IDE controller, serial port, parallel port. So generally if we have integrated components we have a way to enable or disable those components. I press escape to return to the main menu. Many BIOS have an option to automatically detect our hard disks. Select this option and press enter. This will go through a little auto detect sequence. It will check all our ID devices, our primary master and slave and our secondary master and slave and detect what type of devices we have connected to each of those controllers. So if we do make any changes it will allow us to go in and automatically detect those changes. We can even go and manually select these particular items one by one, press enter and it will go through that sequence again. So if we add a new device it may not be auto detected we want to be able to detect that device so we may have to go in and manually detect that device. Press escape to go back to the main menu. This BIOS allows us to set a supervisor password. Supervisor password will be required anytime we want to make any setting changes to the CMOS. I'll type in a password and I'll type that again. So now we have a password set on this machine. One of the last options I'll talk about is the auto configuration. Generally, if you go in and make some changes and something's not quite right, you can generally back out and set them to either factory default or an auto configuration, in this case with optimal settings. If we were trying to tweak our CMOS settings and we made a mistake and our machine became unbootable, we might be able to use this setting to reset those settings, get it back to factory new, and then start working on manipulating those settings to make our changes. Once we have made some changes, we need to save those changes. If we happen to restart our machine or power it off at this point, none of our settings would be saved. 
So in this case we want to select the save settings on exit. Also we could press the F10 key that will do the same thing. So it asks if we want to save our settings. We'll say yes. So now we have the information saved to our CMOS. So our BIOS are our basic instructions. The CMOS has saved any changes to those instructions. I'll boot back into the CMOS setup utility by pressing the delete key. And then it asks me for that supervisor password. So if I enter the password incorrectly, it moves on and it won't let me log in. And then if I do that three times, it automatically restarts the computer. I'll restart again, pressing the delete key. If I enter this, the password incorrectly, it will prompt me one more time. If I enter it again, it'll prompt me one more time. And if I enter the proper password and press enter, it allows me into the CMOS setup. And this time I'll exit without saving. Here's another example of a BIOS and CMOS setup. Right up here I have to press F2 to enter setup. Although the layout of this CMOS setup is slightly different, it has most of the same information. It tells me the BIOS version, tells me what type of processor I have, how fast it is, I have some L2 cache information. This CMOS setup has one screen where you make your selections and change your settings. Here we have the system time, the system date setting. We can configure our hard drives similar to the other BIOS. We can set the hard drive sequence such as booting from devices that are detected by the BIOS or in this case we can boot to USB devices. We can set our boot sequence or our boot order. In this case I have one CD-ROM installed and one hard drive. This machine doesn't have a floppy drive so those are the two boot items. Has information on the memory, how much memory is installed, how fast it is, and then what type of memory channel mode we're using. Some information on the CPU, CPU speed, bus speed. This one doesn't allow us to make any ch setting changes. These are locked in, so this BIOS and CMOS don't allow any overclocking. Integrated devices, those that are on board the motherboard, we can enable and disable the sound, the network card, the mouse port, and things such as that has onboard or integrated power management. Generally you want to use the operating system power management but this device does support some hardware based power management. System security is our passwords, our system and our setup password. Turn on the keyboard numlock so when we boot up the machine the numlock key is on. We can also report errors so if you're missing the keyboard or if you uh, boot up and the hard drive is not detected it can log those errors. A couple of the other settings, this allows us to auto power on at a specific time. So if you want your machine booted up for you in the morning, by the time you get to work, you can automatically turn it on at a specific time. We can allow our network card or even a modem to wake the machine up. So if you are connected to a network and you want to do some things over the network and the machine goes into standby, it can automatically wake up. The legend for the CMOS setup is down here at the bottom, so we use the arrow up and down arrow keys to select spacebar to make changes or the plus and minus key to make changes. We use the escape key to exit and then if we need some help we can press the F1 key. In this case we're just looking around I'm not going to make any setting changes so I'll press the escape key and then that will boot into the operating system.